Hi, my name is Alan, and I am going to give my presentation about deaf actors and actresses. I'm also going to cover a brief history of the profession and go over some of the most notable people in the field. Alrighty, so for roughly the first 20 to 30 years of film and movies, they were accessible to hearing and deaf audiences alike. When movies added voicing and speaking, silent films were then phased out of popular media. These silent films had allowed for audiences to follow along with the actors' interactions and conversations, even if they couldn't hear the actual audio, because the would-be audio was displayed on screen and was read by the audience instead. During this era, there were some deaf actors that found success alongside their hearing counterparts. Granville Redmond, who was a painter by trade, is one example of a deaf actor in these silent films who was friends with and often worked alongside Charlie Chaplin. You can see the two of them here on the set of one of those silent films in their day. Um, and we also need to note that actors such as these typically didn't use sign language and were instead voiced by the text that was on screen. Now, in modern media, there are some standouts when it comes to deaf actors and actresses. A quick Google search can reveal one of the most notable and familiar people to our class. So Marley Matlin is who's pictured here in her 1986 performance in Children of a Lesser God as Sarah Norman. She won the Academy Award for this and also won a Golden Globe for that same role. Now, more recently, Matlin has appeared in a reoccurring role as Melody Bledsoe in the ABC drama Switched at Birth. Now, here's a picture of the cast from Switched at Birth, and this show is a television series that ran from 2011 to 2017. This show featured many deaf and hard of hearing actors. ABC Family called it the first mainstream television series to have multiple deaf and hard of hearing series regulars and scenes shot entirely in American Sign Language. Now some other actors featured in the show are deaf and hard of hearing as well. One specific is Sean Birdie who played Emmett and he was born deaf and has been acting since he was a child. He performed in The Sandlot 2. The show also stars Katie LeClaire who plays Daphne Vasquez and is one of the main characters, but Katie LeClaire does not identify herself as deaf. She does, however, have a condition called Meniere's disease, which causes some intermittent hearing loss as well as some vertigo. She learned American Sign Language at 17, very close to adulthood after she was diagnosed with this condition. Now, Linda Bove is another very notable deaf actress. She played her namesake character as a librarian on Sesame Street from 1971 until 2002. Now, I think I was just a little bit too young to remember her work on the show, but her impact isn't lost on me. Her work introduced so many young children and their parents to American Sign Language and deaf culture. It shined a light on some of the joys and issues that are uniquely present to deaf people. And she originally became involved in acting after the theater piqued her interest while she was at Gallaudet University. Millicent Simmons, pictured here, is quite young, as you can see. And at just 14, she landed a role in Wonderstruck. She also appeared in the 2017 film A Quiet Place alongside John Krasinski, who is also in this photo. And despite only being 18 now, she has a very impressive resume and is a very accomplished actress who's been in major blockbusters. She has also been working with developers and experts to create transparent masks during the COVID-19 pandemic to allow for lip reading and facial expression while maintaining safety and following CDC guidelines on the set to the sequel. Now, just as... The deaf community itself, deaf actors and actresses are very diverse and should be represented as such. C.J. Jones, who's pictured here, is a very important person to discuss because of his contributions and successes within deaf culture and the acting discipline. He is cited as the first deaf black person to be in such a large and successful movie as the 2017 hit Baby Driver when he played Joe. He's also been featured in documentaries about the deaf experience, as well as guest roles on some television series. Now, I personally really enjoyed learning from and about CJ. I learned that he and I share the hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. Now, in St. Louis, he was born to a deaf family, but actually uniquely lost his hearing at age seven. He then attended the Missouri School for the Deaf, and later on in life, he's played a huge part in writing and directing Once Upon a Sign which is a children's show that retells classics through a deaf lens and uses ASL. He now continues his work in advocacy in Los Angeles, California. Now, while not exactly acting in the most traditional sense, many deaf individuals have appeared in reality television. Now DeMarco, who's pictured here in a photo shoot, 
was the winner of America's Next Top Model in 2015 and was the first deaf person to do so. He also performed on Dancing with the Stars for the 22nd season, and Marley Matlin, who I mentioned earlier, has also appeared on that dancing reality show on the sixth season. Now, DeMarco was also an executive producer on the Netflix reality series Deaf You. This show centers around a group of seven deaf students at Gallaudet University, Cheyenne Clearbrook, Rodney Buford, Tessa Lewis, Alexa Paul A. Simmons, Renate Rose, Daquan Taylor, and Dalton Taylor. And you can see a few of them pictured here in one of these promotional images. Now, these acting and reality shows are not without their controversy. The previously mentioned Deaf You was acclaimed by many audiences, but it did receive some critical feedback from the deaf community for its lack of diverse and accurate representation. While I haven't seen this series, I have seen Switched at Birth when it originally aired, and I'm more familiar with some of the pushback that that show met because of their decision to cast someone in a lead role as a deaf person who is not deaf and does not identify themselves as deaf. Now, another controversy that has appeared from a deaf actress is Marley Matlin's decision to speak speak the nominees for Best Actor. Many hearing people were very inspired by her choice to do this, while many deaf people pushed back. Some assumed that this meant Matlin was not proud of her deaf identity, and that speech was somehow superior to sign language. Matlin didn't feel this way. It was just something that she wanted to do. And you can see her in this photo here, which is probably a little bit more like what you expected, and we've seen her in videos in class. Now, any aspect of deaf culture is met with praise and criticism, just as any aspect of any culture would be. These actors that I've highlighted, I think, are very accomplished in their field and often use their platform for advocacy and education. Deaf people are a part of American culture and consume much of the same media. It is so important for them to be represented in a way that is consistent with their experience and that that very media be made accessible and equitable. I was so excited to share this with you. And if you're looking for any more information, I've included my sources in the description of this video. Thank you so much for listening.